It's a Bumblecast Mini, sponsored by Hero Squad. Do you both watch challenge videos such as Is It Possible to Beat a Shadow Without Weapons and Vehicles? Or Is It Possible to Beat a Super Mario 64 DS Without Mario? I think they're admirable and interesting since we're basically finding other ways to beat a game under certain rules. What are your thoughts? Have you tried something similar before? I've seen a few. Um, one that comes to mind was very vindicating because I think I'm in on a previous Bumblecast, when Sonic Adventure first came out, I avoided the homing attack like an idiot. Mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't what traditional Sonic gameplay was. I will use the simple spin jump and nearly beat the game like that. It's just the Egg Viper is a nightmare <laughs> to do that way. <laughs> but somebody, lo and behold, was able to do it. So I was vindicated. You can totally do it that way. It's a legit form of gameplay. What up? Uh, there was another video that was I think it's can you beat breath of the wild without jumping <laughs> or well yeah or was it without climbing with the stipulation being uh using like the actual climbing meter yeah i think that's what it was because they started a new game in the shrine of resurrection and the very first thing you run into in the hallway is a small cliff you have to climb to teach you that mechanic and they ended up like stacking these incredibly fragile crates just right so that they could do the climb up animation rather than the actual climb and got out. And from there, I think they were able to navigate the rest of the game, but that was very silly. Mm -hmm. Also, there was somebody who did a challenge. Can you bring a cuckoo to the final Ganon fight to see if he could aggro the, the cuckoo barrage? And sadly, they managed to get it all the way to Castle Hyrule, and then once the cutscene loaded up, the cuckoo just spawned. Aww. Just rude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rude. I don't think I've ever done any challenges like that myself. If I have time to sit down and play a game, I'm playing it for realsies. And I'm bad enough at games that I don't need the extra frustration. <laughs> With, you know, caps or restrictions, but they are interesting to see what people can do and how they can uh, work with mechanics. And I'm especially impressed by those who don't use any, like, uh, cheats where they're, like, you know, slipping between seams in the geometry or using bugs to bypass stuff, but actually use the mechanics in the game in creative ways mm -hmm. to do stuff that was not intended. That I find really neat. Yeah. Uh, for me, if you'd asked me this, like maybe a month or two ago, I just said, nope, I do not watch those kinds of videos. But actually, <laughs> ironically enough, uh, lately I have gotten into watching some of the, uh, Gran Turismo challenge vehicles. It's like, can you get to the end of the game with the, the starter car or how far can you get <laughs> with only a car from each decade represented in the game? So like... You know, like, you got the 50s all the way up to the 2000s in Gran Turismo 4. So you got six cars to see if you can beat the whole game with only six cars and things like that. It's like, yeah, that's pretty cool. I kind of like that. Um, there's also the uh, randomizer, so prize car randomizer. So every car you get for winning uh, each championship series is randomized, which is terrifying. <laughs> because <laughs> you could end up with <laughs> the formula one car or you could end up with the uh 1800s benz patent motor wagon <laughs> which is a one horsepower beast <laughs> that goes about uh i don't know maybe 15 miles an hour on a downhill <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> it's not used for anything, obviously. It's literally just there just for fun. There's all sorts of stuff like that in Gran Turismo games where it's just like, yeah, you, you're not going to be able to use this for anything. It's just here just because. Just as a celebration and appreciation of motoring history, we put this absolutely useless, boring <laughs> car in here that you can't do anything with. But here it is anyway. <laughs> So. You reminded me also of 
Pokemon Nuzlocke runs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Ali and I watched Team Four Star go through Pokemon Emerald, I think, mm-hmm. religiously. And the they they really wanted, I forget what they really wanted, but they ended up getting a Chikorita. And they named it Mr. Steak because it was one big mistake. And the thing turned out to carry them through the whole bloody game. And they're voicing it over saying, Mr. Steak. And they get to like the Elite Four and out of nowhere, they, you know, it's a grass type. It's weak to fire. And out of nowhere, they get hit with a flaming kick attack that would have killed it. Except this thing is like a freaking wall. (laughs) And so there is this whiplash moment where the the move comes up their joyful banter as they're destroying the enemy evaporates as they're watching the health bar just drop <laughs> and it holds on and then they just explode you can't kill him we tried <laughs> just oh my god it was one of those you had to be there moments <laughs> That sounds pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> Those songs are interesting. I have not uh, really watched much of any of them, but I, I, the concept is fascinating. So I probably should at least check one of them out at some point. Hey, Ian, I've been looking in the article pages of the Tales Tube episodes on the Sonic News Network, basically the Sonic Wiki. However, episode two got me curious because it contains no writers. So I wanted to ask you this simple question. Who wrote episode two of Tales Tube? Was it you, Mike Tyson Hess, or a group effort? Yes, I said Mike Tyson Hess because I'm funny. Mm. <laughs> I see what uh, you did there. Yeah, that was that was definitely a group effort episode. Mm-hmm. So it was a little bit of me. It was a little bit of Tyson. It was a little bit of the group in total. Who is the group? Is the group known? Is the group... Or is the group secret? I Some folks have been identified, but it's not something that, you know, we're necessarily parading around like an all-star lineup. It's <laughs> it's a business thing. It's an all-star lineup of business. Lord business. A pal of mine, SilverPlays97, has two questions to ask. Yes, I'm the messenger boy. Question one. If Risper and Rorschach from Watchmen met each other, would they become friends? Rorschach doesn't have friends. I was going to say. He has a close-knit group of people that tolerate him. (laughs) And by close-knit, I mean one. Yeah. So, no. No friendships. No. I I kind of figured not. They might be able to, like, tolerate each other to work together for a little bit, maybe? Sure, to accomplish it, but... But, I don't know, Whisper might actually not like him at all. No, I, I don't think she'd be particularly fond of him. No, no. I don't think anybody's particularly fond of Rorschach, to be fair. Especially him. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> Have you ever forgotten a story you wrote and had to look it up? Oh, all the time. <laughs> I was going to say, constantly. I mean, I've I've written a ton of stuff, and I I cannot keep track of it all. I used to, sure, just starting out. You know, and I, I had already committed a lot of the early Archie lore to memory anyway as a fan, and I was just contributing to it. I was adding to the mythos, so sure, no problem. But time went on, and more stories were told, and the continuity cleaned up as it was, got even more complicated, and then we had to reboot, and then there became other clients, and there came other projects, and it's like, nah, I cannot retain all of that. Mm, no, not anymore. Uh, I know that the the brothers chaps have said that they have to look up stuff pretty extensively on the Homestar Runner wiki in mm-hmm. order to remember stuff. So, and people really challenge them too with some of those Halloween costumes. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't even know how they to find the references <laughs> half the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Hmm. A Sonic Boom episode revolving around a meme, but not just any meme, it's Sanic. How would it go? Is Sanic actually a real person, but only Stick sees it? Gotta go fist. No, Sanic is Sonic's cousin that he just really doesn't like. He doesn't like hanging out with him. He doesn't even like bringing him up. And Sanic shows up as a two-dimensional object, barely animated. Uh-huh. 
and it's just perfectly nice. Gets along with everybody. They, they're meeting him for the first time, and they're palling around, and they're going to Mad Burger, and you know, why don't you bring this guy up more? He seems cool. Yeah, but, you know, like, small doses. <laughs> At some point, Sanic saves the day from Eggman, and, you know, well, his vacation's over. He's got to go home, and everyone's really sad to see Sanic go home, and Sonic's like, not me by and he has no reason like there's never given a justifiable reason Mm -hmm. that he's got a chip on his shoulder it's just this you know the noodle incident (laughs) all over again with him Mm -hmm. (laughs) i don't know man sonic is a little flat that's probably why what sonic frontier speed run glitches are you able to perform if not which one is the most fascinating i exclude homing dash since it's more of a technique that became basically official in some way I have not performed any glitch moves myself. I heard a one, and now I don't remember the details of it, so this is going to be extremely vague. But it's like somehow you're able to bounce off of enemies and launch yourself out of the skybox or like to a position where you can like fly across the island at very high speed. I I don't know how it works necessarily. And the one time I saw it executed, I wasn't quite sure what was going on, but uh, I, have I, no uh, huh? I have no way to finish that sentence. Oh, uh, I have actually not seen any Sonic Frontiers speed run anything. So, uh, yeah, I have no idea what any of the speed run glitches are. So sorry about that. I'm no fun. I don't watch videos about Sonic when I'm not on the show. I don't I don't like Sonic when I'm not here. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm... You barely like him when you're here anyway. <laughs> yeah. I say, looking at my shelf full of Sonic toys and stuff from when I was a kid and still to this day, river growing. Oh yeah. Yes, I hate Sonic, clearly. <laughs> Joke telling showdown. For fun! Which one of you two can tell one of your funniest jokes? Who is the real Joker? I'm more of a dad joke punster myself, but... I mean, uh, aren't we both, really? (laughs) Kyle, do you want to go first? I suppose. Okay, here's my joke for you. What kind of overalls does Mario wear? I don't know. What kind of overalls does Mario wear? Denim, denim, denim. (laughs) Denim, denim, denim. (laughs) Denim, denim, denim. (laughs) I like that. I like that. <laughs> All right. So three strings walk up to a bar. I see on the side over at the very entrance, it says no strings allowed. And the first strings like, this is ridiculous. We should be able to get a drink wherever we want and goes in and immediately gets thrown out. Second string goes, oh, that looked a little rough, but I'm really thirsty. So he tries to sneak into the bar and immediately gets thrown out. So the third one ties off the very top of itself musses up the end and kind of swaggers on in and bouncer kind of looks him up and down and goes, are you a string? And the third one goes, no, I'm afraid not. Wow. It's a long setup. <laughs> yep. It's a long setup. Is it worth it? Debatable. <laughs> I mean, I'm laughing for what that's worth. <laughs> Which of our, which of our, you were really stringing us along on that one, I gotta say. Ah! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I don't know whose was funnier. Tell us in the comments below. <laughs> which bad movies have you both seen? And do you find yourselves having guilty pleasures for liking the movie itself? May I request you to a food fight? I have my limits. Uh, this food fight looks like actually awful, like <laughs> unwatchable. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. It just does not look, it doesn't look appealing in the slightest. I keep bringing it up every now and again, but uh, Hugh Jackman's Von Helsing yeah. is a bad movie, mm-hmm. but I love it. It's stupid in all the right ways. I enjoy the level of camp. I actually like the vampire designs. It's, I have fun with it. I ain't going to defend it, but I'll watch it every now and again. I still love the original Super Mario Brothers movie. Not the recent one, the 1993 one. Mm, 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 mm. Yes, I still absolutely adore that movie. Is it a good movie? Debatable. 
actually to most people no it is not but it has redeeming qualities <laughs> honestly i think it's more interesting and has some more neat stuff going on than the actual recent more canonical mario movie <laughs> the one that like actually follows the design and everything it's like well this is 1993 mario wasn't quite established in the same way that he is now so the original super mario brothers movie just has fun with it just does whatever and i think i appreciate that a little bit more so yeah i still love the original super mario brothers movie and that's one i i, I it's not a guilty pleasure it's just a pleasure <laughs> <laughs> plus it has like a really good cast which is like man it does it if, absolutely a, if does. another no there. yeah if another movie if a better movie with this same cast happened it would be like a fantastic very well celebrated movie so but yeah that's good it's good stuff i go back to that one sometimes here and there and the next question is the murder of sonic the hedgehog canon Everything is canon. <laughs> I wish. Oh, wait, you mean the game, not the actual murder of Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> that shelf of memorabilia Kyle does, has is not out of fandom. It's a hit list. <laughs> yes, yes. And the comics I've got hanging on my wall, too. There's Mega Man yeah, comics yeah, up yeah. there. The ones that you... Yes. <laughs> and the Mega Man comics are up there, too, because he's next after Sonic. <laughs> I think Mega Man is dead. You don't have to touch him. Uh, yeah, I didn't have to kill him. Capcom did a good enough job on his own, on their own. Uh, <laughs> so, is the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog canon? Uh, uh, maybe. Kind of depends, I guess. What do you think? Put it down in the comments below. <laughs> do you think it's canon? Who knows? Were you going to say something? Nah. We'll nope. leave it at that. Nope. Okay. <laughs> How did Razor, Coral, and Relic, as well as the Warp Topaz and the Hydra Pack, come to existence? I'm quite curious about their concept and creation. Hydro Pack. Like, I mean, like Kits? I'm guessing it's pack? Kits Water Pack, yeah. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Um, the Moropus Trio was a concentrated effort between me and Leah Baker uh, with the reboot we wanted to reestablish the world as large and inhabited by all sorts of stuff and what we hadn't really seen were aquatic mobians so the two of us collaborated a lot on that story she came up with the designs uh, i found the maropus myth and we just continually built on that idea uh the warp topaz was meant to be a plot device, quite literally, to <laughs> establish Dr. Starline's importance, to bring Eggman back into the fold, and to use a MacGuffin that we could get rid of. Like, didn't want to make it a Chaos Emerald thing because the Chaos Emerald's going to be tied up elsewhere and they didn't have that kind of property anyway. So the Warp Tope has existed for plot reasons. And then it endured longer than I intended. So surprise. <laughs> uh, as for the, for the hydro pack, that was um, mostly designed by, I think it was Evan Stanley and Marrow. Cause they were, I think they were the principal ones behind the design process. Kit was always meant to be inspired by the artificial chaos and his entire gimmick was built around the pun name of Kitsunami, you know, Kitsune and Tsunami. He's, he's a multi-tailed water fox boy. And how those water tail tendrils would be generated, I didn't have a solid idea on. It's like, there's a few ways we could do this, but I am not a character designer. So here's what I want to happen. Artistic people, you do it. You make it work now, please. And they did. All right. Cool. And we got one last question from Hero Squad. Final question of the day. Oh, nope. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We missed one. Never mind. Next question. With the original Winnie the Pooh books by A.A. A. Milne now being in public domain, every character is now public domain except Tigger, because he won't be free from copyright handcuffs until next year. But you can include him in, too. 
What other characters would you give abilities and traits to if they were to appear in Sonic media? Another note, you can't take anything from Disney's interpretation, nor the horror movie one. See, I'm only familiar with the Disney versions. Uh, I don't really know the, the hor- source material. Oh, yeah, okay. I was going to say, the the horror movie like literally just came out, and also it looks awful, so <laughs> I don't think you have to worry yeah, about that The horror one. movie, I'm, I'm not given the time of day, you know. No. Oh, here's public domain of this beloved children's franchise. Let's make it gory and dark. Absolutely, completely creatively bankrupt. So, <laughs> uh, says the guy whose but, the first big thing was a dark adaptation of Sonic the Hedgehog. But also, you were like what fourteen? I was an like angsty teen. <laughs> I was gonna say you yeah. were like fourteen. <laughs> so yes, literally, <laughs> yes. And you didn't actually it, it go out. It was and, not good. You actually didn't go out and make a movie about. It. <laughs> I know. No. I know. I know. No, I'm no, just, no, no. I know. I'm just bringing this up to because I know someone else is inevitably also going to bring it up. It's like, well, come on, I got you. I beat you well, to it. Because I can. I had honestly forgotten about it till you brought it up. Well, I know you'd uh, prefer that. Sorry, but <laughs> eh, the internet never forgets. Nope, it never will. Sorry. <laughs> but you know back circling back to the main point i again am not familiar with the material that isn't the disney interpretation and that is so deeply ingrained in me i can't think of anything else like winnie the pooh was something i loved as a kid we had the three vhs cassettes and we watched those until like the magnetic strip was worn down the boxes were falling apart I could recite some of it to this day. <laughs> it's I that's the Pooh Bear I know. So I don't know if I can really get to the spirit of your question because of my own personal ignorance, but to try to meet you halfway, we'll go with the Disney versions as the basis because that's what I know. And I'm willing to bet that's what most folks are familiar with. Uh, Pooh Bear himself would just be, you know, big, <laughs> kind of easy going, you know, nigh invulnerable because, you know, he doesn't really have the mental capacity to process pain. He just kind of exists very passive, very friendly, very, you know, cuddly. All he wants is honey. And, you know, big is looking for froggy. Pooh Bear doesn't know what a froggy is, but if it's anywhere near honey, he'll certainly help him look and they go off on adventures together and get into all sorts of hijinks. <laughs> Piglet is a very small animal. He's stuck in a bad nick somewhere. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Owl is that weird uncle to the Babylon rogues that they don't really want to associate with because he just keeps going on and on about how they should be doing things, but he doesn't actually know how to get this tech works. Get out of here, old man. <laughs> uh, Rabbit is working with the restoration. Manages stocks and supplies. Gets along with Lanolin. Great. Yeah. Tigger is Kanga basically... And- huh? I was going to say, Tigger is basically Tangle. <laughs> More or less. <laughs> uh, I mean, their their tops are made out of rubber. Their bottoms are made out of springs. Uh-huh. Fancy, pouncy, trancy, pouncy. Fun, 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 fun. Uh-huh. <laughs> and the most wonderful thing about them is that they're two in one. Uh-huh. Uh, Kanga and Rue are neighbors to Cream and Vanilla, and they hang out <laughs> and are great neighbors. Very wholesome. And Eeyore. Is he hanging out with Shadow? <laughs> no, he's with Knuckles. Oh, or, okay. Technically, he's on Angel Island. Okay, yeah. He just hangs out with his little pathetic tent of sticks. <laughs> You know, Knuckles is on patrol on the aisle and just kind of drops by, hands him his tail back. You drop this. Thanks for noticing me. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> they get along great. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, is that everybody? With his tent of sticks. Wait, you mean sticks like sticks or sticks like the characters? <laughs> <laughs> no, he just has a little lean-to of small branches, okay? <laughs> And if anyone's asking where Gopher is in all this, well, he's not in the book, so no. Mm. He declared that himself, freely, of his own volition. Christopher Robin is not here. (laughs) 
Christopher Robin supplants Chris Thorndike and Sonic X is infinitely better. <laughs> hmm, the Heffalump? Hmm. <laughs> the Heffalumps and Woozles are the new eldric force that Eggman is hunting down. <laughs> He's heard about these heflums and woozles. Heflums and woozles. Very sly. They comes in ones and twoozles. And if they so choozles, before your eyes shall see them multiply. <laughs> They're oh. extraordinary, so better be wary. Because they can change their shape and size. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. oh, wait, no. Anything to just have Mike Pollock piloting some kind of storm cloud generating egg carrier and singing I'm just a little black rain cloud hovering over <laughs> the city streets <laughs> <laughs> I'm only a little black rain cloud turning the hedgehog into mince meat <laughs> <laughs> oh sage is very lost <laughs> 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 Sage is searching who that where that narrator is. She just keeps hearing this voice and it's driving her crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. There's your next storybook series crossover. We've Sonic thought, and the Hundred Acre Woods. I, I'm pretty sure we we have had that. We've done that before. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. We did that one before, but still it, it's fun. <laughs> this is kind of like the opposite. Like what if the Pooh characters came to the Sonic world instead of Sonic went to the mm. Hundred Acre Woods? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. We got one last question. Can you two recall one of your favorite and funniest moments on the Bumblecast? I'm sure there are more to come as I'll continue sending questions. Oh, we've had lots of fun on the show. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think we could choose just one. I think one of the standout ones within recent memory was uh, the April Fool's prank you guys pulled on me. Well, yeah, <laughs> that was fun. That was masterfully executed. <laughs> that one was fun. I enjoyed that. Rye says you're welcome. <laughs> uh, yep, that was good. That was a good recent one. We've had way too many, like, very silly questions that have just gone off the rails, like all the <laughs> Starline Isekai questions and the... I like how that's become the running gag now. One of the run yeah, running yeah. gags. I'm, I'm just amazed we have been at this for so long. We have running gags. <laughs> we had a lot of fun with the uh, Sonic Jurassic Park crossover. Oh yeah, yeah. That got a surprising amount of mileage. Yes, that one was yeah, that one was super fun. <laughs> uh, I will I will never forget the day we were forced to contend with the word Nermies. <laughs> I don't know if that's Speaking a running gag. I don't know if that's a highlight though. <laughs> <laughs> it, it makes me laugh. Thanks, Twilight Lord. There was that after credits Bumblecast after dark segment where you started riffing on stuff <laughs> involving Ralsey. Oh yeah. And I had trouble breathing. Yes. <laughs> uh yeah, yeah. That was good. That was fun. The socks stay on, you know. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, and in the most recent well depending on when this comes out in a recent bumblecast live i apparently struck gold with sonic bravo so we'll be seeing that again because that makes you laugh <laughs> and i'm definitely swinging for the low-hanging fruit and well as long as it makes me laugh that's all you need then again i'm exactly. e i'm easy to make laugh but still you just have to look but at it's me. such a delightful laugh so charming infectious even well i'm, I'm glad at least you like it <laughs> Uh, and there it is. And there we are. Is there any particularly hilarious moment from the Bumblecast history that you have as of your favorite? Mention it in the comments below. <laughs> you got a lot of comments to leave. You got a lot of homework, so you better get cracking. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll leave you guys to it and wrap it up here. Thank you so much to Hero Squad for sponsoring this Bumblecast Mini. If you want one of your own, head over to patreon.com slash bumblecast, ko-fi.com slash bumblecast, or become a YouTube member. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and we will see you next time on the Bubblecast. Bubblecast.